What's good, YouTube? If you're watching this video, you successfully made it to layer seven of the OSI model, where we give you nothing but that application you can apply directly to your life. I'm your host, Dewan. What's good? As you can see, I got two days left. Before we continue, I have to let you know that this video has been sponsored by the good folks over at Contia. I am on a journey to achieve my Contia Linux Plus certification, exam number XK0-004. Two days left before I talk to Contia and schedule my exam. As you know, every Wednesday I recap my certification journey and I do a giveaway. Today's giveaway will be for the Contia cert master practice which is exam questions to help you prepare for that linux plus exam i just started going through it the first tool that i used to prepare for certification was cert master learn all these links will be in the description next was practice labs that's what i'm using now as well and that's what i'll be using for this video this video i'm giving you 10 linux commands that you should know we're going to be doing this in the CompTIA linux plus practice labs there's about 60 lives in here of different tasks that you actually have to perform in a Linux environment. The cool things about these environments is that when you go through here, you'll see this lab. I actually have to configure step-by-step step whatever the lab has to do, but you'll have a Windows node, you'll have a Ubuntu server and a CentOS 7 server, which is exactly what you need to prepare for the Linux Plus. Everything's right here at your fingertips. You don't have to build any VMs or anything like that. You have your environment right here. So in this video, we're gonna walk through step-by-step step, 10 Linux commands that you should know. I hope you're ready. Stay tuned for the giveaway details. We're gonna give that away as well. So let's get started. So the first command that you should know whenever you're on a Linux system is PWD. Print working directory. Understand that print working directory allows you to know exactly where you are in the Linux directory or file system. Oftentimes you'll have to navigate through Linux because it's all command line and you may be looking for a particular file or wondering, okay, where am I? And PWD allows you to view exactly your current directory where you are in the Linux file system one of the most basic commands another command that you need to know is the who command this lets you lets you know who's logged into the system and who am i will allow you to know exactly who you are that's logged in currently with linux sometimes you have to navigate to different users and so if you change from root or if you change to another user account or if you're creating test accounts, sometimes you might not know who you are. So using the who, who am I will allow you to do this. And if you need to know, okay, who's logged into the system and what transactions they're doing, the W command will allow you to view who's actually logged in and the transactions, transactions that they're, they're actually doing on the system. So the first command was PWD. The second command was who, who am I, and the W command. Let's clear the screen. We type clear, clear the screen. Number three, the next command that we'll go over is the sudo and su command. So su allows you to change user. Let's say I want to go to root. I type su and I type a hyphen and I'll enter my password. And now I'm logged in as root. Now, let's say I want to go back to my other login. I can type exit, and this will take me back to my administrator login. Now, let's say I want to change to another user. I believe I have test user one on here, and I never created a password for test user one. So, let's see if we can create a password for test user one. So, if I try to get in, let's see if this works. If it doesn't, I don't have a password for test user one. I created test user one, but it needs a password. So I think we're going to create a password. So the next command we're going to do is the sudo command. Su allows you to change users. 
to the root, root user or another user, sudo allows you to run elevated privileges from your user account. So rather than making every user an administrator, you can give them elevated privileges to perform whatever tasks they need on the Linux system. So we're gonna go sudo, and then we'll go password, because we wanna change the password of test one. So we'll type that, and this would allow us to change the password, but I'll have to enter my administrator password first before we change that password. So let's do that. Boom, now we need to create a password for test user one. So we'll create a password here. And it tells me that the password isn't long enough, but it still accepts it. So now I'll clear the screen. If I wanna change the test user one, I'll go su hyphen and test one. I'll enter his password, boom. And we are logged into test user one. As simple as that. So number one was PWD. Number two was who? Who am I in the W command, which is a good time to try this out here. So let's see who. Ah, so administrator, W, administrator, who am I? Who am I? And I'm test user one. Perfect example of, let me play the screen. Perfect example of when you will use these commands. So let's exit and go back. And that was using su and sudo to change users and to use elevated privileges when you're on your use standard user, user account. Okay, the next command is gonna be the list command. So if I need to list my directory, we're gonna use ls. This allow us to view what files we have on the system. So if I do clear and I do ls again, these are all folders that I have on this system. Now, they're in this row for format and it's kind of hard to read, especially if you had a whole bunch of directories here. So you can actually use different options. One option is the long format. And in this long format, you actually see the permissions of these folders for the um, for the users, groups, and all that. Then you see the groups and the users um, for the owners of these files or directories, which I'm not going into all that here, but just know that in order to view those, you will use the long format, and you can actually add the A command to view the hidden files in that directory. Very useful. I use it all the time when I'm actually searching for things in my Linux environment. So that's understanding lists, which is, hold on, let me, let me clear this. Understanding lists and how to use it will help be a tremendous help in your career. Another thing about lists is that you can actually list other directories or other files in other folders. So what I'm listing is my current working directory, but say I wanna list the files in the Etsy directory. So I wanna list everything in there. Boom. It allows me to do that. And I can just keep going. So if I use the minus L, long format, and I can keep going for wherever I wanna go. And let's say I wanna do this password. I can see what's ever in here. And I see there's a file called password. And that's how you do that. So let's clear the screen again. And you understanding the list along with printing your current work and directory will come in handy, especially when you start writing scripts and creating files and navigating files throughout your file system. Number five is gonna be CD or change directory. So if we list my current directory, you can see I have a folder here called lab every day. The blue is folders. And if I had a text document, it would not be highlighted blue. It would just be black like everything else. So let's change directory and go to lab every day. And now we're in lab every day. We're going to list the contents of lab every day. And you can see I have a test document in. Pretty simple. And if I want to go back, I will go cd dot dot. And it'll allow me to go back. Or I can go cd. And that will take me all the way to root. And if I do current directory as you can see I'm at root and if I list root 
this lets you know everywhere I'm at. So where I want to go is back to my home directory, home, PWD, and I'm in home. But for who? Ah, not administrator. So I need to go CD administrator. Now I'm at home where I really want to be, home administrator. So I'm in my current directory. Pretty simple to navigate through, but that's how you pretty much do that. So see, clear my screen. So now that I'm back in my home directory, we do a ls minus l. The next thing I want to do is create a file. But in order to do this, let's do it in the live every day folder. So let's cd and better yet, let's create a file, but let's create it in the live every day folder, not our current directory. So in order to do that, we're going to use the touch command and let's call this file lab every day and let's call the file giveaway.txt. Boom. So now we want to list and see if that file is actually in lab every day. And as you can see, the giveaway text document is in lab every day. Now, what we need to do is edit that file. So first thing we're going to do is change directory to lab every day. We're going to list the contents in this directory. And as you see, we have giveaway. So let's clear the screen, list it again. So we make sure everything is in there and we have this giveaway text document. So what we need to do is edit this text document for giveaway. So what we'll do is nano type nano and then give away text what this does which is number seven on the list is open the nano text editor very simple to use nothing complex nothing complicated if you're used to use the notepad plus plus or notepad standard that comes with your Windows system this is nothing like that but it's exactly like that at the same time and the reason why I say it's nothing like it is because you can use your mouse for that but for this, it's going to be all using your keyboard to enter your commands, to save your documents, and to navigate in the text editor. A lot of people use it. There's other text editors like Vim, VI. But for this, the most basic one to learn is Nano. So for the giveaway today, here's what you're going to do. In the comments section below, give me one skill that you want to learn from Linux and apply to your career. One skill, along with the hashtag CompTIA Linux. I'm going to type it on the screen, save it in Nano, and then we'll go on to number eight in our list. So, in the comment section below, share one Linux skill that you want to learn and apply to your career. Hashtag CompTIA Linux. That's all you have to do. And I'm going to save this. Yes. All right. So, I just saved it. Now, that's all you have to do, and now print this to the screen. So number eight on the screen is the cat command. The cat command allows you to print whatever text document that you want to view to the screen in a readable format. So cat, giveaway, boom. So in order to be in the giveaway, to be entered into this week's giveaway, in the comment section below, share one Linux skill that you want to learn and apply to your career with the hashtag CompTIA Linux. Leave that in the comment section below. So number eight on the list was a cat command. Good luck, and I hope to see you this Sunday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on my YouTube channel. Okay, now that we did that, let's clear the screen. So we do ls minus l. We have this giveaway file. Let's say I want to move this giveaway file to my desktop. So what I want to do is type mv giveaway, and we're going to move that to my desktop. So move that we need to go dot dot up and then desktop so now if we do ls minus l you can see we only have one file in this directory we had it before it was here the giveaway file was there but we moved it to our desktop and we can verify that by doing ls minus l dot dot and then desktop and you can see that now on the desktop we have the giveaway file Simple, simple as that. It's so simple. So that was the move command. Now let's say we want to copy that file 
back into Lab Every Day. So what we would do is copy dot dot, and let's say desktop and giveaway, and we would just want to copy it here, and we'll just do dot to our current directory. And as you can see, it's copy dot dot desktop giveaway and the dot with a forward slash is our current directory. So if I clear the screen, if I can type and I'll do it ls minus l, that file is back. And it should be still be on the desktop as well. So ls minus l and we need to do dot dot and desktop and the file is still there. So now we move the file and we copy the file. That was number nine on our list. It's for all my networking gurus and for anybody that's going to be working on a Linux system. So we'll clear the screen and that's going to be if config. If config allows you to view your network configurations on your device. As you can see, we have ETH0. And here's the IP address of ETH0. My MAC address of ETH0 along with my IPv6 link local address on my device. So all of that's there. Pretty cool. Pretty fancy. If config, you never know when you'll be in an environment, you need to troubleshoot the network configurations of that environment. So understanding if config is another one. Um, and also the route command is another great one. So as you can see, I have a default gateway configured on my EVE Zero. So this entire network, if you want to network, use this interface. So number 10 on the list was if config. A bonus here at num number 11, because I like to give bonuses, is the trace path. As a network engineer, you often have to troubleshoot, let's say, bandwidth, latency, MTU, so many different network configurations to verify that connectivity is functioning properly. A cool thing about Linux is it has a command called the trace path command. Now, I know you heard of trace route. So if you want to trace route, we could actually trace route to whatever address that we have. So now this will go per hop, per hop, per hop. Let's you know how many hops, how many bytes and packets. It does, it does what it's supposed to do throughout the network until it gets to its destination. But that's all it gives you. And depending on your Linux system, you may need elevated privileges. So if we clear the screen, another command that you can use is trace path. Trace path not only gives you the hop information, but it also provides you MTU information throughout your paths. So if you're wondering what's the MTU that devices have configured, let's say a router or gateway, what MTU pack, packet size that it's allowing, this trace path will allow you to verify that. Pretty cool command. This is something I just found out, so I'm excited to actually use this. Haven't had to use it yet, but I'm excited to see how it goes. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit this video with a like. If you didn't, hit this video with a like. In the comment section below, good luck in the giveaway. Give me one Linux skill that you want to learn and apply to your career today, along with the hashtag CompTIA Linux in the comment section below. If you have not already, subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you all this Sunday live at 7 p.m. on my YouTube channel. Peace.